According to Aristotle, all human beings desire to know. We are curious by nature, born with an insatiable drive to explore the horizon, to construct models of reality, and to strive to better understand our place in the universe. For most of us, science is an intrinsically rewarding endeavor that enriches our lives, broadens our minds, and deepens our appreciation for the majesty of the world in which we live. For others, science is just a way to make sure everyone knew who was the most hardcore motherfucker on the block. These people were born with an insatiable drive to make Mother Nature their bitch, bend reality to their diabolical will, and tear the universe a new asshole. This is a testament to the most fearless, most maniacal, most utterly and categorically insane minds in the history of empirical investigation. This is badasses in the history of science. Archimedes was possibly the world's first mad scientist. His genius was irreproachable even by the standards of ancient Greece, renowned for the highest rate of geniuses per square mile in all of history. But while the likes of Socrates and Plato were busy speculating on the nature of wisdom and justice, Archimedes was busy trying to find the most efficient ways to melt the flesh off the bones of his enemies. No, seriously, discovering novel methods for incinerating other human beings was one of Archimedes' many homicidal pastimes. Basically, he was the ancient Greek equivalent of a Bond villain. School children everywhere are told the story of Archimedes' bare-ass, naked run through the streets of Syracuse. This is the story he's most famous for, probably because school teachers don't want to explain to parents why their children are having nightmares about an ancient Greek mathematician. As the story goes, King Hieron II tasked Archimedes with the job of determining whether his new crown was pure gold, as the goldsmith had claimed, or if the king had been cheated and the gold had been mixed with a cheaper metal. After drawing a bath so he could soak while contemplating the question, Archimedes lowered himself into the water and realized that his body displaced a volume of water equal to the volume of his body. And like that, it clicked. He could compare the volume and the weight of the crown with the volume of an equal weight of pure gold. If they matched, the crown was genuine. So excited was the polymath that he ran through the streets as naked as the day he was born, shouting, Eureka! I have found it! While this is certainly a monumental accomplishment, it was probably most significant at the time because this was the first chance that the world had to see Archimedes' massive balls. It would not be the last. The same said King Heron II also commissioned Archimedes to design for him a warship. Never to do things half-assed, Archimedes built the single largest warship the ancient world had ever seen, the Syracusia. It had a cargo capacity of 1,800 tons and was outfitted to carry 600 people, including 200 fully armed soldiers and a goddamn catapult. On top of its military provisions, it also had a garden, a fully functional gymnasium, a library, a temple to the goddess Aphrodite, and a swimming pool with hot water. Because when Archimedes sent an army to go murder a bunch of dudes, he made sure it would be done in style. Critics said the Syracusia would never sail because it was simply too large. A ship that size would leak too profusely, take on water, and sink before it got to its destination. But Archimedes wasn't about to let a little thing like the laws of hydrodynamics get in the way of sending men to crush whole civilizations. He simply invented a screw pump to remove the bilge. His apparatus was faster and more efficient than any similar device that came before him, revolutionizing not only nautical travel, but also agriculture, engineering, and, Archimedes' personal favorite, warfare. To this day, we still use this basic design and call it the Archimedes Screw, a phrase which in other contexts would be much more horrifying. The Syracusia was hardly the only weapon of war Archimedes designed. Remember the catapult I mentioned a second ago? The existing designs simply weren't killing enough people for Archimedes' tastes, so he refined them, vastly improving both their power and their accuracy. But that was just a warm-up. With some tinkering, Archimedes figured out a way to make the catapult steam-powered, so powerful, in fact, it could actually launch a 23-kilogram stone nearly a thousand meters. As Leonardo da Vinci would later realize, this means that Archimedes basically invented the world's first cannon. Over a thousand years before the Chinese discovered gunpowder, Archimedes was launching stones at anyone dumb enough to come within range. 
But he wasn't content with simply improving upon other people's weapons. He wanted to create completely original ways of sending people to an early grave. And damn howdy did he ever come through. One such machine of death was the world's first siege crane. Using a complex system of block, tackle, counterweights, and grappling hooks, this ancient monstrosity was deployed to defend the port of Syracuse from naval assault. The grappling hooks would be launched at enemy ships, and the crane would, no shit, lift these multi-ton vessels out of the water and either turn them upside down, drowning everyone on board, or dropping them on the shore, crushing everyone inside to death, while presumably Archimedes cackled like a madman behind the city wall. This ancient weapon of mass destruction became known as the Claw of Archimedes. Honestly, how many non-supervillains do you know that have a freaking claw named after them? The claw was used to successfully defend the city from Roman invasion on several occasions. They learned the hard way that no one fucks with Archimedes. While dropping entire Roman fleets to their death might seem like more than enough killing to satiate the appetite of even the most voracious of mass murderers, it just wasn't enough for Archimedes. As much as he loved drowning and crushing foreign invaders, there wasn't as much fiery death and burning destruction to suit his bloodthirsty appetite. To amend that shortcoming, Archimedes invented his single most dumbfoundingly awesome tool of genocidal mayhem yet, the planet Earth's first genuine bona fide motherfucking death ray. Please allow me to repeat that, because it might just be the single most badass thing you have ever heard in your life. 214 years before the birth of Christ, Archimedes decided it wasn't good enough to launch fire, stone, or metal at his enemies. He wanted a device that could send out waves of pure energy, destruction, and death. How is it possible, you ask, that this mad genius could create an instrument of such ass-kicking wonderment without lasers, calculus, or even for that matter, electricity? Don't feel bad if you can't figure this out. That just shows that, unlike Archimedes, you're not a psychotic genius bent on immolating anyone who crosses your path. Here's how Archimedes did it. He positioned several large, highly polished mirrors along the city wall. When enemy ships approached, they concentrated the sunlight to a single point, igniting the ship and roasting everyone on board like ants under a magnifying glass. Today, scientists are doing everything they can to figure out how to use the power of the sun to solve the energy crisis stop global warming and save the planet. Archimedes just wanted to use it to burn human beings alive, thus inspiring countless military engineers and criminal masterminds for centuries to come. Yeah, so what if the guys from Mythbusters said it probably didn't work? Since no written records existed at the time, they were left just guessing how Archimedes might have done it. And while Jamie and Adam are both seriously badass, they really can't begin to approach either Archimedes' as genius nor his flair for cremating living human beings in their seaborne coffins. Honestly, how many machines of death and destruction have Jamie and Adam invented? It wasn't long before the mere sight of one of Archimedes' militaristic castration machines would make hundreds of Roman invaders completely lose their shit on the battlefield. And this gave Archimedes another great idea. Why bother actually inventing machines to terrorize the Romans when he could trick them into terrorizing themselves? Archimedes was able to fuck with their heads so thoroughly that all he had to do was throw some ropes over the wall and raise up a few random pieces of wood, and the Romans would retreat in pants-shitting terror. Some of them reportedly thought they were fighting the gods themselves. If only they had been so lucky. Since he'd succeeded in either killing or scaring the ever-loving shit out of the entire Roman military, Archimedes had no one left to slaughter. To distract himself from the sudden dearth of carnage, Archimedes went back to thinking about astronomy. He endorsed Aristarchus' heliocentric view of the universe, and gave the most accurate estimates of the circumference of the Earth and the distance between the Earth and the Sun that the world had seen up to that point. After explaining the principle of leverage, he famously quipped, Give me a place to stand on, and I will move the Earth. No one had the balls to ask him to prove it. From there, he turned his mind to calculating how many grains of sand could be contained in the entire universe. This was no small feat, as it was literally impossible to count that high given the number systems that existed at the time. Whereas most sane people would simply give up at that point, Archimedes just invented a new number system. 
This system, known as exponential notation, is still in use today by nearly every scientist and engineer in the world and allowed Archimedes to make the most accurate estimation of the volume of the universe for centuries to come. His estimate was 8 times 10 to the 63rd power, grains of sand, to fill the universe. The actual number is closer to 3.5 times 10 to the 91st power. Okay, so he was off by about 28 orders of magnitude. But when you realize the previous estimates were scarcely large enough to fill the actual volume of the sun, you can see what a massive improvement this was. Archimedes was the first human being to begin to grasp the size of the universe on the scale of modern astronomy. Granted, this was one of his few insights that didn't result in the wanton killing of mass numbers of human being, but it's still pretty badass. His mind being absorbed in the solving the mysteries of the universe department, Archimedes grew lax in the slaughtering every Roman that came within a 10 mile radius of Syracuse department. Seizing the opportunity, the Romans stormed the city and immediately hunted down the lunatic who had orphaned nearly every soldier in the entire damn army. The commanding general issued orders to take Archimedes alive, one imagines on the assumption that he would happily work for the Romans provided they gave him a chance to kill even more people than the Syracusians did. The first Roman soldier to locate the mad mathematician found him deep in contemplation of a geometry problem. The soldier commanded Archimedes to go with him. Unimpressed by the paltry killing tools the soldier had on him, Archimedes dismissed him with a wave of his hand saying, Do not disturb my circles! Enraged by the slight, the soldier struck him dead on the spot. When he found out about this, the general had the soldier executed. Because, you know, Archimedes would have wanted it that way. To honor his genius, Archimedes' face appears on the Fields Medal, the most prestigious award given in mathematics. This was, at best, a compromise, made necessary by the fact that they don't give away medals for dreaming up new ways to slaughter people. Because of his contributions to mathematics, Archimedes has rightly gone down in history as one of the most brilliant men who have ever lived. But it is because of his contributions to civic defense, psychological warfare, and just general ass-kicking that this one-man murder machine factory will always be remembered as a badass in the history of science.